All right, so we're back here with the Wine Expert Eclipse Pinot Noir kit. All right, and we can see that we've gotten pretty much through our primary fermentation. We we're down to like around 1.0 on the hydrometer. So at this point, we're going to rack into a carboy that I've cleaned and gotten ready over here. Now, a lot of times I use the spigot and connect the spigot to the tubing and rack that way but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using my um, auto siphon because I found that sometimes the sawdust that's in the primary gets clogged and I don't get as much wine out that I would like to so I'm going to set up to do that I'm going to set up and um, we'll be back in a minute and you can see I'm going to get started with that okay Alright, so we're all ready to get set up. I have my auto siphon, and I have my uh, anti sediment tip over here, and I have the other side of the tube going into the carboy. So I'm going to fit the anti sediment tip on the bottom, and what's great about the auto siphon is you put it in, you just got to pump it a couple times, and just lay that in like that. You didn't have to do anything much to get the siphon started. And what we are doing at this point, as you can see, I am racking from the primary to the carboy. And it's that simple. Now, these uh, tubings have things like this, um, what do you call it, clamp. That if I needed to, you know, if I needed to stop the flow, I could just, you know, squeeze that. It'll pinch the tubing and um, stop the flow if I had to, if I was afraid of overflowing or anything like that. But at this point, the racking is going great. We are bringing this, you know, wine into the carboy. What some people say to do, which I do most of the time, is I will raise the tube like that and splash the wine against the side and what that does is it will um, you know help to gas it a little bit maybe introduce a little bit of oxygen into it to help it complete the fermentation um, but for the most part I'm just trying to help the gas as much as I can okay but basically what we're going to do is try to rack into here, this carboy. And you can see the wine is being transferred. Now when this gets down to close to the end, what I'll do is I'll take this bucket and I'll tilt it back a little bit so that that way I get all the wine that I possibly can out of it. You can see with the auto siphon it goes pretty quick. One of the other things I've been doing that you can't really see too easily is I have my little pail here of uh, Be Bright solution that I've been cleaning my airlock and you know stuff that I'm going to need to finish this up. Carboy's getting filled and you know another thing I want to do is I want to keep an eye on this to make sure that you know I don't overflow. Um, when you're marking the uh, fill in the primary you, know, you just can see the edge where it says five gallons, four gallons, six gallons is up at this ridge. Okay, now I'm getting back. I'm going to tilt the bucket and finish it up. You can see that I'm basically just holding it up, tilting it like that. You can see that it's going. I haven't overflowed yet. Hopefully I won't. But I want to try to get as much wine into this as I can. I 
and you can see that I've done pretty good. I've gotten a good amount of wine into here. I'm going to try to bring as much of the wine as I can in. Alright. And I'm not going to be too concerned about topping up yet. Okay, at this point in the game, I'm not going to really care much about that. Alright, so at the next step, I'm going to take this tubing out, clean it up, put it aside, and get my airlock ready. And I'll be right back when that's done. Alright, so here's our Pinot Noir. And we have put the um, airlock on. And we're going to put this aside probably for like another week or two, if not longer. And... Um, We'll take it from there, continue to kit from that point. But at this point, once we get it into the carboy, we're pretty good. You know, I've left wine like this. I haven't gotten to it for a couple months and uh, get back to it. So at least we get out of the primary or into the carboy, we're good to go into the secondary. If you wanted to at this stage, you can add extra things like oak cubes. Um, to here if you wanted to impart more of an oak flavor but um, I'm not going to be doing that at this point because we did have the oak dust in the primary um, but if you're someone that does like a lot of oak you can certainly do that if you wanted a starting place I would start around 30 grams and take it from there okay um, alright I want to show you a couple more things real quick Alright, so the first thing I wanted to show you is one of the things that I typically do because I make a lot of wine kits and a lot of different types of wines, not only kits, I, I do other stuff too, is that when I'm making a kit, I take the ingredients, I usually throw it into a Ziploc bag and uh, whatever's left over, the instructions and all that, and I uh, tear a hole in the bag and I put it around the neck of the carboy. So that way I have everything that goes with the wine, that stays with the wine through the whole process. Um, of course in case I get sloppy and don't do that and forget to do it or forget to put the bag back on. But you know, for the most part that's what I try to do because I have a lot of different wines going simultaneously and sometimes it's easy to get confused which one is which. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you guys, I get asked all kinds of different questions. One of the questions is, what exactly is an airlock? An airlock is this tube, or this you know body of the airlock, that basically has a tube coming up the bottom. It has this like kind of cap that goes over the tube. And it has this that seals it closed. Now the whole idea is, you fill this up to about here, up to about halfway, with water or vodka or something. Some people use a sulfite solution. And I'm going to fill that up. Okay. Now you can see it's kind of filled about halfway. And what happens is when the wine ferments, it gives off CO2. That comes out. And what will happen, you see these little holes in the bottom? It will float until the CO2 can get out of that hole. And it makes a little bubble. So it just goes up and down, up and down, up and down as it's bubbling. And what happens is the gases can come out of the wine, but they can't go back into the wine. So it's important to make sure that you have this filled enough with water that it will do it, but not filled too much with water that it won't ever go up all the way to get the gases out. Okay? So that's a, a three-piece airlock. There's different types of airlocks. This is the one I like the best. I tend to use the best. Um, I just love these kind of airlocks. They work really good. I try to get extra ones, uh, so I have always an extra one on hand. It's cheap enough. It's a piece of plastic. Um, the other thing that's a concern is that these bones, 
when you see these bungs, make sure you get one that fits tight into the um, carboy. I've had a couple of people that have talked to me about these bungs that you know either are loose or that end up inching their way back up and out. So I have a couple of different kind of carboys. Some of them that happens, so I, I get different bungs, okay? So there's rubber bungs instead of these universal bungs that work better on some of my carboys than others. I mean, basically, what you want to make sure is that it makes a pretty, pretty nice seal so that, you know, air and other things don't get in there. Okay? Alright, so thanks for watching. Come back and see the um, process of this uh, Pinot Noir finishing. And, um, you know, one of the other things I want to tell you guys is I have an exciting project that I'm doing. If you look at my blog, I'm going to be making um, a dragon blood wine. So the instructions to do it is on my blog. And, you know, I've had a couple of people express interest that they want to do something with me simultaneously. So uh, the ingredients list is on that blog. So take a look. Um, and I'll put the link for that underneath here as well. And, um, you know, if you guys want to make something along with me and we could compare notes, that'd be really cool. All right, thanks for watching. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my video channel here on YouTube. And check out my blog at www.cooking-italian-recipes.com for great Italian recipes, tips on organic gardening, winemaking, and uh, herbalism, and all other kind of fun stuff that I'm into. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Tell your friends. Take care.